So what I want to talk about in this lesson um, is the idea of the Big Bang. So when we think about it, if we think about the universe, for example, like what what is in the universe? So our universe, it's a vast area of space within which we find all the galaxies, the stars and solar systems that make up the universe as we know it. Now, when we think about it, sometimes you might think the universe, for example, is something like this, what we see here. Now, this here is what's known as our solar system. And this is just one solar system among millions and millions and millions of other uh, solar systems and galaxies and stars, trillions. It's, it's actually unimaginable, um, the amount of other systems that are, are out there. Now, if you consider in our system, we have the sun, and the sun is a star, so it is. So if you think about most of the stars that you see in the night sky, they can be the center of, of, of individual solar systems, just like our solar system. So it's actually, it's, it's, and that's only what we can see from our tiny little perspective here on this planet that we call Earth. So really what we've been, you know, what humans have a burning question that's always been there is, where did we come from? What was the beginning? How did it all begin? Um, and religion can, it has its answers or it points towards a creator, for example, that created everything, God. And religions have grown up around that idea as well. So really, from a scientific point of view, you know, scientists have always been asked, like, how did our universe begin? So this is just a solar system, our solar system that we're, that we are part of, as a part of humans on this tiny planet called Earth. But there's this whole solar system and all of the other solar systems as well. So how did it all begin? Where did it all start? And what was there at the very, very beginning? Like, how did this all start and how did it begin? And these are some of the questions that humans have asked in their desire to discover the origins of the universe. So this question has always been on our minds um, as scientists. So people have always had more questions than answer on this subject. The limits of our technology meant there was a complete lack of evidence for scientists to work with. And these questions about the creation of the universe remained unanswered until discoveries in astronomy and physics led to uh, led scientists to determine that there was a beginning to our universe as well. So really, like humans are very much limited to the five senses as they were. So for example, the human sight has a, has a range, has a limit, and this very much limited what scientists could observe and what they could look at. Like they could look at the sky and look at the stars and look at the movements of the stars and do, and do that type of thing as well. And indeed, um, early you know, philosophers and uh, scientists used to do this and they came up with theories based on that. But it was very, very limited what they were able to do. But as new technologies became available, for example, a telescope that enabled humans to be able to extend their vision and be able to look um, in much further distances, it allowed scientists then to be able to start to, um, you know, look at the um, celestial bodies in the sky, such as stars, and start to kind of make some determinations about them. And also the discovery and the, the study of light as well and the properties of light gave scientists an awful lot of information in relation to uh, the stars and um, what, what, what was going on up in the sky and, and indeed in the universe. So if we think about, if we have a look at this, so this is kind of something that you, you might have come across as well. So this is our solar system. And what we have, we have the, the sun that's in the center. And then we have um, the planets, for example, that orbit around the sun. And then eight planets then have um, bodies that orbit around them, such as moons, for example. And if we think about, so we have Mercury is the closest, Venus, Earth. So we're, we're kind of here, kind of, you know, turned in from the sun. And just this location where we are, is just perfect for us in order to support human life. If it was in here, for example, somewhere like that, it'd be too hot. And if we're out here, for example, it'd be quite cold as well. So we have Mars here. NASA and scientists, you know, they, you know, their next great mission is going to be try and get humans to Mars, which is a it's, it's the furthest away. 
Then we have this um, asteroid belt. So it's basically just asteroids and pieces of rock and materials uh, floating around within an orbit. And then you have Jupiter, you have Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto as well. And a lot of these guys out here that are further away, so a lot of these planets that are in closer to the sun are kind of made out of heavy materials and they're able to withstand the huge temperatures that are being generated by the sun. Whereas these planets out here are kind of like big gas giant giants and they're made up of gases so they are, that are kind of tightly clustered together. Um, and if we think about all life on this planet comes from, is sustained by the energy from this star that is our sun that generates it. So you have energy, the light from the sun that's traveling millions and millions of miles across the depth of space and it warms up planet and then we have organisms then that can absorb the sun and use it to make food and make oxygen and all those type of things that we as humans need in order to be able to survive on the planet but what like what scientists when they talk about this big bang what they're trying to figure out is where did this all come from and how did this all begin it seems like a very ordered system so where did it begin and what did things look like at the very very beginning so in order to kind of think about this we first have to kind of think about um, a sign, this guy here. So this guy here, um, he was an American astronomer and his name was Edwin Hubble. So this one, this guy's name here, he is Edwin Hubble is his name. So Edwin Hubble. And so he was an astronomer and he was kind of on the scene about 1929. So, so in 1929, the American astronomer, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. So what he actually found was true observations that he was making. He found that the universe was expanding. So a way to kind of think about that is if this is our universe, let's say at a particular point in time, at another point in time, it's going to be here. Like this is going to be the boundary and then this is going to be the boundary. So it's all the time expanding in all directions and it's getting bigger. It's expanding out. So this means that all objects in the universe are moving away from each other. And that includes all of like the planets and everything else as well here. Things are, are gradually moving, they're, they're slowly and slowly expanding. So trying to imagine something, so trying to imagine something on the scale on the scale of the universe is a, it's a very difficult concept for people to grasp. And you know, it can be very hard to kind of wrap your head around this. Now so Hubble, Edwin Hubble, he noticed that the universe was expanding. And not only did he know that it was expanding, he actually, through his calculations, he figured out that it was expanding at a great rate. So it's expanding at this very, very, it was expanding very, very quickly as well. So Hubble's discovery became known as Hubble's law. So if we, so Hubble's law, and this is Hubble's law here. So Hubble's law states that galaxies are moving away from each other. The further away a galaxy is, the faster the galaxy is moving away from us as well. So if we think about the stars, for example, that are in the sky, they are all like, a lot of them are the center of a solar system like ours. But what's happening is they're getting further and further and further away. They're actually expanding and they're moving away. So this indicates that, you know, that the universe is expanding uh, time and space is expanding into the universe, is, it, is expanding. So um, just before I kind of get into the theory of the Big Bang, I just want to kind of talk about then. So this hair, this instrument that we see here, this is what's known as the Hubble space. So this is known as the Hubble. Space. 
telescope. So the Hubble, basically what it is, is it's this huge telescope that was built. So the Hubble uh, Space Telescope, uh, which was launched by NASA in roughly about 1999. So NASA, so NASA, you know, commissioned the building of this telescope. So essentially what this is, is it's a huge telescope um, that was built and NASA launched it into into our orbit and into outer space in 1990. And the Hubble telescope is named after Edwin Hubble. So the Hubble telescope is, it's an extremely, it's extremely important for furthering our knowledge of space. And um, now what this enables, like so, what this enables scientists to do is enable us to get a kind of clearer picture of what's actually going on um, up within the depths of space. So normally when we look into space, we're looking through uh, telescopes that are located on the Earth. So for example, you know, scientists um, have telescopes dotted all over the world. And what they do is they observe space and they look at the stars and they look at the moon and the planets and different things, but they look at it from the perspective of, of, um, of from Earth. Now the images that we see, that so the images that that the uh, scientists get from their telescopes that are on Earth, uh, the images that we see they, that they see are actually distorted and they're changed by the atmosphere, and this can affect what we what we can actually see. So what if you think about it, so imagine we have the Earth here like so, and then around the Earth you have an atmosphere. So it's made up of the air essentially that's around. And what happens is if you have a star up here in the night sky, what happens is the light coming from the star, we look at this, but, but the atmosphere here actually interferes and distorts this image. So we're not getting, it's a kind of, it's not a very clear image that we can see of the star. So the benefit then of having something like this, a telescope is that we actually, this was launched up into space and it's outside the atmosphere. So therefore we're not getting this kind of distorted distortion effect happening um, from the atmosphere. So we essentially get outside the atmosphere and it, what it means is that we can actually start to look and peer into the depths of space. So this Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope is out in space and it's orbiting at a height of 569 kilometers above Earth. So this it's just orbiting around the Earth and therefore the Earth's atmosphere does not affect the images the telescope receives from space as well. So what it can actually do is it can look at it can look at different uh, objects, for example, within the universe and outside of the Earth's atmosphere, and it can look at them and see them in a little bit better detail than what we can see, um, you know, what we can actually see from from the perspective or from the location of the Earth. So if we have a look, and I'll just show you how some of the so these here, for example, are some of the some of the images that the Hubble Space Telescope has shown us and look that we've we've been able to look back on as well. So if we have a look at this, this is a massive solar system here, and we have a sun or a star, for example, in the middle, and we have all of this these plumes of matter just all around this uh, solar system. And within this, there could be millions, there could be thousands of different planets and moons and all kinds of stars and objects as well within this whole system. So it's a massive system. So what it enables scientists to do is to be able to look at these systems and galaxies and, and study them. So was there really a big bang? So the term bang suggests that there was an explosion of some form, but this is not actually what happened at the start of the universe. So what we can do is we can kind of start to think about what actually started to happen. And just if we have a look in this, we'll be able to kind of just go through just a very um, high level overview of this, um, the start from scientific knowledge and from our best estimates and predictions, this is what scientists believe happened. And again, the important thing to know in relation to scientific ideas is that this information or these theories evolve all the time based on the information that they get. So if we think that the universe was expanding 
So Edwin Hubble concluded that there must have been a single moment uh, when the entire universe was held within a single zone. So for example, if, like, if we know that the universe is expanding, if we just extrapolate back, there must have been like a single point where everything, so all of the matter that makes up everything that we see around us, not just on our planet, but the whole universe and system must have been all boiled down into a single point or this single moment. And this is what they believe. So this, it, sometimes it's called a singularity. And uh, this was the beginning of the universe, which Hubble's observations puts at around 13.8 billion years. So we're saying that this Big Bang or at the start, it's roughly about 13.8 billion years. So scientists call uh, this single zone in a single moment, the singularity. So everything was compressed down into this tiny point, which is known as the singularity. So if we think about this singularity, and if we look at it even from here, from this point of view, so at the very start, we have this, this single tiny point. And what starts to happen is we get this, this point starts to expand. So we get this expansion. And with this expansion, there's a huge amount of energy, like energy that we can't even, wouldn't even be measurable, let's say, with our instruments and things that we have now, and wouldn't even be comparable to the temperatures, for example, that are even from if even if you're to take the hottest of stars, for example, it wouldn't have been anywhere near um, how hot things were at this particular point. So when this this tiny uh, singularity started to expand, um, you know conditions were very very hot. So what what we're saying is that like it was like a boiling soup with electrons, quarks, or protons, and other elementary particles. Um, it, it, so it's extremely, extremely hot. So it's just like this massive boiling soup. And it was so hot that, you know, even subatomic particles like protons, protons, electrons and neutrons, for example, wouldn't have even been able to form. So it would have been just a massive soup of, of energy, essentially. So the Big Bang, the singularity was a region so intensely hot that the normal particles of matter and particles that occur in atoms, they didn't exist. So if we think about the basic subatomic particles, you have protons, electrons, and neutrons. And these basically arrange in different combinations and ways. And what they do is they make up all of the elements that make up everything around us. So even at this point, during this point, even these couldn't exist because conditions were so extremely, extremely hot. And within a single moment, so, uh, some scientists believe this time frame to be as short as one second, this intensely hot singularity expanded. And this is, this is where the term the Big Bang comes from. So basically what happened is this point started to expand. So in the first moments after the Big Bang, the universe was so hot that we cannot imagine even, um, you know, with levels of temperatures that great. So it started to expand. So this is it. So it just started to expand out the universe. So, so the universe, um, so as it started to expand out, as the universe continued to expand out, it began to cool. And the cooler temperatures allowed particles to exist. And it was now also cool enough for light to begin to travel through the universe. So what we have is this singularity. We get this like point where it starts to expand rapidly. And then what starts to happen is as it starts to expand, it starts to cool down. So the universe, um, it's just one way to kind of think about it, it's a super hot fog. And heated protons and electrons hinder the emission of light. Um, 
and light elements are created like so what starts to happen is it starts to expand once it starts to expand out it starts to cool down when it starts to cool down you get simple elements start to form and when these simple elements start to form eventually it starts to cool down even more and what can actually start to happen is light can actually start to be generated so once it kind of started to cool down light then was able to start, light was actually able to start to travel through the universe so if we think about like so we just have this soup of energy and then what starts to happen is you get simple elements that start to be produced so protons electrons neutrons combine and form atoms primarily hydrogen and helium atoms so what happens is the the matter starts to cool down and it starts to form protons neutrons and electrons so how did matter form so how, well, like why did atoms start to form so gravity is a force that pulls particles together so we have gravity so this force of gravity which was originally present within the singularity allowed particles to form matter so gravity essentially if we have particles all kind of dotted around like this gravity is going to start to bring these all together and what they're going to start to do is they're going to start to kind of clump together like so and then what you do is you, you start to get all of these particles starting to be formed so this matter came together and formed into stars the planets and all the known structures in the universe and so we will be looking at these structures in like over in following lessons as well so all of this um, clumps of matter it started to come together and it started to form matter so protons electrons neutrons combine and form atoms and generally what we have is we have like really simple atoms if we have a look here so we have simple atoms like hydrogen for example and helium which are the first two atoms that we see on the periodic table and they're very very simple as well if you look at their um like helium is just one proton and sorry hydrogen is one proton and helium is just two protons and two neutrons so this force of gravity then started to pull everything together and it started to make up this these basic and simple atoms and then like if you think it's so what if we think about we're out here so this is where like simple atoms are starting to be formed and then as we move out further what starts to happen galaxy formations start to happen and basically what we have is we've hydrogen and helium atoms began to form in these giant clouds and um, that will become great galaxies and stars so what starts to happen is basically you have all of this hydrogen and helium for example floating around and gravity kind of pulls it all together and it creates these big clouds of um, hydrogen and helium and these are like the galaxies that we see so therefore like gravity then it formed all the structures within the universe and the combination of matter and gravity formed an estimated one uh, 100 octillion stars so that's a huge and that's a hard picture to imagine so imagine the universe if if you were to kind of just to kind of put this into perspective if you were to represent the universe as a sandy beach then a single star would be equal to one grain of sand on the entire beach so that's just to kind of get it just to put it into perspective how many stars there are for example in the universe and that's just a rough figure so if you think of a beach and you think of one grain of sand that would just be one that would be one star and the entire beach then is all of the stars all the grains of sand each grain of sand represents one star so what happened then large groups of stars formed into galaxies and our, and our universe came into existence so the big bang then is a theory uh, is only one of the explanations for the formation of the universe it is how scientists have tried to explain how the universe developed from a single moment and it's it's amazing to think that we are living on a planet that is orbiting a star and this star the sun is one of billions of other stars that are part of our galaxy and our galaxy is also one of many other galaxies that make up the universe the exact answer to how our universe began is still unknown and scientists continue to look for an explanation for the origin of the universe so we don't know why this started but we can look at the evidence and we can 
look at observations, for example, from the Hubble telescope and study all of these stars and planets um, and galaxies and solar systems. And we can start to kind of try and piece together and figure out what actually happened. So essentially, that is the theory that we call the Big Bang. And again, it's just a very rough overview of um, the Big Bang and what actually happened. And we'll start to look at, for example, some of like the formations from following the Big Bang, such as planets and stars and um, moons and different things like that as well. But it's very interesting and I would encourage you to go online and have a look, like Google, there's plenty of really good documentaries about the Hubble telescope. And it's very interesting to watch and look at, um, you know, the efforts that we've gone through to, you know, put a massive telescope into the, in, up into space so that we can actually observe and study the universe around us and try and kind of get answers to those really fundamental questions. You know, how did everything begin? Where did this all start? And um, what's the, you know, what's the origin of the universe as well, which is, which are very difficult questions to answer, but, um, but they're questions that are, are very worthwhile. So where did the singularity, this point in space actually come from? And what was the singularity? And did the singularity actually appear out of nowhere? This is something that scientists just don't know at the moment and they can't answer. We can only answer and, you know, propose questions to, to things that we can actually observe in the universe as well. But it's amazing when you think about what we have discovered and what, uh, you know, the information that we do have now. Um, you know, we have a much kind of clearer picture of our universe, um, a little bit clearer picture. But again, it's, you know, there's an awful lot to be discovered and to be understood. Uh, but again, we kind of chip away at it bit by bit, and that's what kind of makes science such a, um, you know, a really good way at making up, you know, explaining observations and things that we see around us. So that's just a quick introduction to the Big Bang, Ed, Edwin Hubble, and then Hubble's law that that the universe is expanding. So thank you for listening.